evening ladies and gents and you will join me for an evening tour of St Anne's Churchyard in Limehouse sacred to the memory of Captain Edward Ford rope maker of this parish who departed this life November the 9th 1762 aged 66 years also Christopher Ford, Christopher Ford grandson of the above Edward Ford who departed this life December the 23rd 17 sorry 1807 aged three years and eight months also Mrs Elizabeth Ford, widow of the above Captain Edward Ford, who departed this life September the 27th, 1810, aged 80 years. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the uh, plant made it go all blur, the, that made the lens go blurry, sorry. Well, you heard me reading that. That's very well preserved for that age, actually. I'm liable to get bitten to shreds because... I am, uh, I have got shorts on. In memory of Thomas George Lester, son of Thomas and Mary Ann. Oh, not Jesper. Jesper, Y E S P E R. Of Commercial Road. Obit, which means died December the 12th, 1841, aged 10 months. Also, Thomas Jesper, he died on the 7th of January, 1844, aged 20 months. And then it's got Margaret Jesper, she died on the 20th of January, 1850 something. And the rest is gone. There's quite a few well preserved ones here. Thomas William Bardet. Mary Ann Barnett, wife of the above. She died in 1871, aged 83 years. And he died in 1870, aged 72 years. Then we get round to the older side and I get out of the sun, that's better. Sacred to the memory of Clarissa Barnett. Died October the 21st, 1823, aged seven years. Also, Thomas Barnett died, and then that's completely worn away the date there. You've got Elizabeth Barnett below. Elizabeth Barnett, and she died in what looks like 1836. And you've got I don't know if that's Alexander Hopa Barnett, Robert Augustus Barnett, and he died in March 1835. And then you've got Adolphus Barnett, died in August 1839, aged 51 years. Oh, that's much better. So, to the memory of Mary Ann Willison. Died April the 29th, 1851, aged 80 years. Elizabeth Sarah Williamson. 
died May something 1862 aged 73 years Charlotte Williamson died October the 25th 1826 aged 69 years there's quite a few different names on this one I wonder if this is a burial club some people did join burial clubs and they joined together if they was friends um, they'd buy a grave and obviously all buried, be buried together sacred to the memory of Thomas Arthur Bannister and the rest of that is very worn away see little faint bits and pieces oh look there's more on the back of this stand that's upside down well that's very strange hmm. that's weird I'll have a look at that one later on and turn the phone upside down, I'll be able to see it better. Okay. That's very strange, isn't it? <coughs> Maria Ann Adams. Family grave of Mr. Joseph Adams. Sacred to the memory of Mary Ann Adams, daughter of the above, who died the 18th of September 1842, aged nine years and five months. Also William Adams, son of the above, who died the 27th of March 1843, I think that is, aged nine months. Also Mrs. Mary Ann Adams, the beloved wife of Mr. Joseph Adams and mother of the above children who died on the 18th of November 18 that looks like 40 nah that can't be that must be later aged yeah it's 1840 aged 38 years God knows what here. Elizabeth, wife of Mr. Matthew Eltham. on something 18th day of May 1839 in the 29th year of her age and then there's a, a verse just below that but a bit worn away some of these are fairly well preserved the tops are going to be a bit worn away more than the other oh so where we've got here also Edward grandson of the above who departed this life November 25th 1832 aged 11 years also Elizabeth grand daughter of the above who departed this life July the 13th 1831 aged 10 years it's a shame John H A M I L Hamilton, John Hamilton, that's all I can make out of this man's name, departed this life, that looks like, uh, I can't really make it out, but Hamilton is the surname, <clears throat> there's another one behind it, so whether that's got right in it or not, I don't know, also, something Hilliard Heather Hilliard 
No, it's father in law, so it's not Herbert, sorry, also Herbert Hilliard, father in law of the above. And as you can see, the above is completely worn away, so that ain't much good to us. It's completely worn away, that one. Sorry, guys and girls, I keep putting my finger over the camera, then I. Also, Mrs. Catherine Brown, widow of the above, who departed this life January the 8th, 1821, aged 40 years. Also, the above, Mr. Robert Brown, who departed this life the 11th of April, 1839, aged 71 years. There is a name above there, but or an inscription above that, but I can't figure it out because it's too worn away. And that's worn away as well. So as that, that's going to be an old one, that. A lot of the gravestones from, that do survive are from the 1830s. This church and churchyard was built in the 1750s. And don't forget, every hundred years or so, they had to dig people up and um, put them in a charnel house or in a crypt, so to make room. Mrs. Anne Christmas, wife of Mr. John Christmas of this parish. It's got Master Frederick. Menge, M-E-N-G-E, grandson of the above, died June the 15th, 1837, aged 11 months. And that's Mr. John Christmas. Can't <coughs> figure out <coughs> his uh, death date, but here we are. John Sattler, <clears throat> S-A-D-T-L-E-R, Sattler. Mm. Is it too long away for me to make out? Thomas Cooper Sarah Rebecca Cooper Right, we've got some of these box ones over here, so I'll check them out Sacred to the memory of Mr. Benjamin Abbott, who departed this life something of July, uh, July the 3rd, 1860, in the 84th year of his age. Sacred to the memory of Esther, second wife of Benjamin Abbott of this parish who departed this life the 26th of October 1855, age 63. Also Mr. John William Abbott of this parish who departed this life the, that's the 12th or the 13th of July and it looks like 1839, aged 51 years. And you've got Mary, the beloved wife. So we are Mary, beloved wife of Mr. George Lyon of Munsters. 
Regent's Park and daughter of Mr. Benjamin Abbott of this parish who departed this life January the 8th, 1840 in the 29th year of her age. <clears throat> These ones are completely worn away but obviously I'll give you a look at them anyway so An interesting story that I do know about this one is this man was a ship's captain or well, he's not buried here his wife children and a servant are buried here and they all died of cholera him and it seems to be his sister or sister-in-law the records aren't that clear and a servant moved from this parish to Barking probably maybe because of what happened and he is buried there. His grave is very well kept up, very well, well not very well, but fairly looked after. Captain Clark, so these people are Clark. And um, yeah, it mentions that they are buried here, but this one is nowhere near as well looked after, so you can just see the odd letter here and there. Aged 55 years, but yeah. So yeah, they died, they all died of cholera. And I only know that because of one of the church wardens at Barking who told me the story because she knew I was coming to Limehouse Churchyard a while ago, not now. And she said to me, I'll have a look at this grave. And then she told me the story of that. So that's was fairly interesting. And this is Mary Ann. Looks like Shirata. Ah, this might be a bit better. S H E R R W A T T. Sherwat. Sherwat is the name of this one. Mr. Thomas Sherwat, who died May. The 8th, 1864, aged 81 years. Also Mr. Thomas Sherwatt, son of the above, who died the 21st of June, 1896, aged 81 years. Oh, both father and son were both aged 81 years. Mr. Francis Sherwatt of this parish, who departed this life, can't make out the date but it's 18 years and one month the year I mean I couldn't make out the year don't think this one does have anything on it but no over to this one now there's an interesting little curio here some um, obviously just a story because they could have, if they managed to build this church, they could well have got this up there, but I'll tell you in a minute. Thank you to the memory of Mr. James Batheridge, length of Cheney's something. And he died. On January the 22nd, 1831, aged 86 years. There's a verse under that, but I cannot make it out. It's a bit too worn away from my eyes. If there is anyone else mentioned on here, I think they have worn away. This is our interesting little curio. It's known as the pyramid. A lot of people that go by think it's the grave of an Egyptologist, but it's not. The the legend or story goes that this was made in one great big lump instead of two small pieces or whatever small pieces 
it was meant to go up there but when the time came to haul it up there in the 1750s they couldn't do it so it stayed down here apparently they tried again because this church burned down in 1851 so they tried again in the 1850s and this I don't believe because they had steam winches by that time and if the Victorians wanted something done they got it done but yeah apparently they tried again then and uh, fouled but it may have been that it was meant to go up there and just didn't end up being put up there because it does look rather plain up there and like something should have gone there Yeah. Up there. Yeah, it's can yeah. Do you know what he says? Can what? you see what he says? No, no. No, what does it say? The wisdom of Solomon. It's wisdom of Solomon. Oh cheers, mate. Thank you. I can put some water over it, I suppose. That's alright, I can zoom in on that. Thank you, thank you for telling me, appreciate that. Cheers, mate. The wisdom of Solomon, there you are. Cheers mate, thanks very much. Oh, I'll come along here in the morning yeah. and have a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. We only discovered it the other day. Yeah. We've been here for months and we've only just discovered it. Yeah. You know I mean? At the right time, you see it. Yeah. The rest of the day, you just don't see it. No, it's one of them things, isn't it? Got to be there at the right time. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Take care, mate. Wish you well. Wisdom of Solomon, that's nice, that bloke coming out, it's got good eyesight, or I don't know, put water on it, but that's handy, I didn't know what it said. Yeah. What have we got here? 1833. William. Subric. S-E-W-B-R-I-C-K, yes, Subric. lovely church and you can see with the, the sun on it look at those gorgeous colours well, don't that just look real fine and pretty I'm filming on my ordinary phone because the other one's charging up <coughs> William Chambers family vault of William Chambers of this parish what it says underneath that I have no idea because it's worn away but that's been restored. Huh. In memory, Mr. William Chambers of this parish. Builder. Died November something, 1853, aged 70 years. Oh, he's a builder. Not your labouring kind of builder like we're thinking of that. This man would have had a trade, as they said, or had a few bob to his name. I'll show you something interesting about this church in a minute. There's a stone over there, which I shall go and check out. There's one here. These ones, there are some along the wall here, but they are completely worn away, so it's pointless even trying to read them. William and Harriet Sewell something child of William and Harriet Sewell on September on 12th of September 1814 died 21st of May 1834 or 24 that is child mortality rate was awful back in those days wasn't it
looks lovely this church when the sun shines on it it does it goes like a honey color which the architect may well have had in mind I've done inside and outside tours of this church so I'm scroll back through my page and you will find them somewhere Something Rebecca Newington John Thomas John Thomas Board on January twelfth, eighteen ten, died March the eighteenth, looks like eighteen forty, and then Rebecca Newington is below and below that you can't see anything because it's worn away there's an old old grave there but that is mullered some fall apart or get damaged and some get vandalized must have not seen a great deal of vandalism in this churchyard ouch vicious sack thank you to the memory of Miss Charlotte Mayers wife of Mr. John Mayers of this parish departed this life the 10th of March and that 1828 or 29 and I can't see any more other than that because it's very very worn it's the war memorial over here. The inside of this church is lovely. It would have been very, very spectacular in its day, but it's a little bit the worse for wear now. Flaky paint, you know, water stains and stuff like that. It's a shame. Here's the War Memorial. To the glory of God and grateful memory of the men of Limehouse who fell in the Great War, 1914 to 1918. Greater love hath no man than this that lay down his life for his friends. Have any names not graved in perishable stone? God holds eternal record in his heart alone. And this got a bit damaged a few years ago, not by vandalism, just age and it's subsiding. I don't know what's just crawled up my trouser leg but it feels like a spider, yeah it's a spider. One minute life's going well. Next you've got a spider up your trouser leg. Some respectful remembrance to those men. And the interesting little curio that I'm going to show you is here in a minute. Not this gravestone here that we're going to see or part of the gravestone. But in the doorway. In loving memory of Mr. William Woods and William Hanks, 1887.
know if those two men. Died in some accident or something. Doesn't it look like one of those mass grave type thingamajigs there? But yeah, the interesting curio is here in this doorway. I think it's this one. Yeah. Masons, masons marks from the stone masons that would have carved this piece of stone. T H. LP GS 1754 and construction of the church started in 1753 and you see by the carved line marks this would have been rendered in a lime render so those marks wouldn't have been seen but they were put on there to let the foreman know who'd carved what, how well they'd carved it and how well to pay them or to give them a rollicking had they done it wrong and there you see modern masons marks done in graphite rather than carved in. Oh, I suppose a poo in this corner. I've still got something crawling up my trouser leg. And this is the best bit, but inside, you've got a beautiful stained glass window inside. So, well, and outside as well, but stained glass always looks better from the inside, of course. And it's set into like a wooden frame, which is very ornate. There's a couple of graves in this bit here, but it's always locked, I'm afraid. And I'm not jumping over fences, but I can see the name. It's uh, Mr. Richard Peter Smith. Died. F I don't know why they lock this bit off because. Uh, all Saints Churchyard at Poplar is pretty much built very similar to this one and this has got that's got a little garden like that and you can walk in that one but this one is padlocked but yeah that looks like it's been burnt it's very damaged by the weather isn't it this will be over 30 minutes this one guys and girls but it's an interesting little old place and there you've got the Urban Bar. It, I don't know what its original name was though. We'll see. It might be up on that sign. No. Urban Bar. I'll have a look and see. Anyway, that's the Limehouse Church Institute. That, that building there. Let's zoom back out. It's a nice old church anyways. Yes. Were you meant on? Were you meant on? Sure, I've got stones or something in my shoe. Let's actually get in. And these would have all once been all over the churchyard, but like uh, most London churches, they churchyards they move them makes it easier to mow you see only one or two that have got the names that you can see and this one's Mr Thomas Jones he started this life of August 17th 1789 aged 30 years This one here is Mr. Richard and Mary something of this parish. That's going to be a child. John something, a son of Richard and Mary of this parish. He had this life. August the 11th, 1805. 
aged six years. Sorry. He was in the tenth year of his age. Also Mary Wicker. Ah oh, that's the surname, Mary Wicker. So that, that boy's name is John Wicker. Wife of Mr. Richard Wicker of this parish. He departed this life November. The rest of that's gone, but it's aged 88 years, so that's a pretty good age. And we've got one here, which is Anne, wife of Benjamin Colcott. Died 20th of March 1825, aged 50 years. That's Elizabeth, and I know that surname is Pretty, P R E T T Y, and she died in August 1812. Charles Hutch, H U T C H, of Lansbury, something that's C T, it's going to be Lansbury Crescent of this parish. He died March the 26th, 1827, aged 70 years. Sorry, seven seven years and ten months. Hmm. What's the son of? Joseph Hutch. Son of Joshua. Son of Joshua and Jane of this parish. Uh, it's hard to make them out sometimes, so they're so on the way. We've got a few more over there. I don't know if they've got writing on them or not, but we will check them out while we're here. I've been meaning to do a live with this churchyard for a while. Sorry if I'm just smelling so I can smell dog much. These are going to be from the 1700s, these ones. Joseph Langton. That's all I can see of that. George Rankin, Esquire. Departed this life September the 11th, 1829, aged 44 years. Richard Walham W A L G Walgham W A L G H A M of this parish. Do hope I haven't trodden the dogs nut because I've got to get on the bus and a bit embarrassing when that happens. So this is what annoys me with these, you can see it okay-ish on this, but in my poor eyesight. Mr. Jonathan Fraser. A fair penny or two anyway. If there was anyone on that side, it's well worn away now. These are the old 1700s ones, <clears throat> the vast majority of which have worn away completely. We've got a couple of slate ones here, so we shall look. Mr. William Wood. Late 
12. St. Vincent, oh. who departed 2nd of October 1852, aged 25 years. Oh, that's interesting. Here lies buried Catherine Lee, oh. who died the 11th of August, 18, seven, sorry, 1754 age 28 years. Also Elizabeth Osborne mother of the above who died 21st of May 1761 age 69 years. Also Thomas Osborne husband of the above Elizabeth who died 1768 also, Richard Osborne, son of the above, who died the 19th of May 1802, aged 64 years. Also, Eleanor Osborne, wife of the above, Richard, who died 19th of May 1807, aged 64 years. And that's also in memory of Mrs. Isabel Mills, wife of Captain Henry Holling Mills, and the rest of it below the ground, so we ain't got no chance to see in that, I'm afraid. Turn my light off. Oof. I know I've got a knee covered in dirt and goodness knows what else, but I don't mind. In memory of John Dicker, John Dicker of this parish who died 26th of December 1840 in his 55th year. Martha, his wife, died 4th of March 1862 in her 73rd year. And her third daughter. Born 24th of May 1820, died 13th of May 1821. Adelaide, fourth daughter, born 26th of December 1831, died 29th of April 1843, buried beneath this stone. Martha Dicker, eldest daughter, for some years organist at this church, born 22nd of January 1816, and she died the 2nd of February 1912, buried at Kensal Green. Oh, a couple of the people who are buried at St Matthias Churchyard in Poplar are buried at Kensal Green. So that must have been the catchment area for this one. Frederick Steve, Seth, sorry, it's Frederick, seventh son. Born 18th of July 1828, died 23rd of April 1866, buried at... Stanmore, Middlesex, Charles, fifth son, born 25th of May 1825, died 24th of May 1886, buried at Dunnerley, Victoria, that's in Australia isn't it, uh, John, eldest son, born 9th of August 1818, died 19th of August 1887, buried at Sean Cliff Kent, Sarah's second daughter, born the 13th of June 1817, died 4th of September 1888, buried at Walthamstow. And you've got Alfred Dicker, youngest son, born 30th of November 1829, died 28th of November 1911, buried at St Leonard's on Sea, that's in uh, Sussex, near Hastings, well that is in Hastings, right next to it. On the side, so if we've got anyone here. Francis Manley, third son, born 18 August 1822, died 14th of March 1889, buried at Melbourne, Victoria. And then you've got Robert, sixth son, born 31st of January 1827, 
Died 2nd of May 1900, buried at Kensal Green. William, second son, born September. Born St. Peter's Day, June 1821, died 19th of November 1905, buried at Nunhead. Thomas, fourth son, born 26th of January 1824, died 14th of May 1906, buried at Brighton. So there would have been a top to this, I should think, with the parents' names on it, and goodness knows where it's gone. So I do think I remember seeing a top for that, but whether it's been taken or what's happened to it, I don't know. lovely old church this one if you uh, ever come by the, the vicar's very friendly as well this is more of one of your like your modern kind of churches it's not very high church or anything like that inside they don't do high church with the services and that. it's quite relaxed so that's quite nice all right ladies and gents I'll get you all to 50 minutes that man sitting over there, that's that fella who told us about the writing on that stone. I don't think there's anyone or anything here, and I can feel that my legs have been absolutely bitten to shreds already. So, yeah, right, we've now concluded our tour. So, give you a little view of that, get you to an even number because I don't like uneven numbers if I'm brutally honest with you. Hope you all found this barbarically interesting. If you did, please give it a like and a share. Thank you all very much for watching.